I'm not going back to college to be your friend. I'm going so I can get Uber One for students. It saves you on Uber and Uber Eats. I'm there for $0 delivery fee on cheeseburgers, up to 10% off smoothies, and 6% Uber cash back on rides. Just to be clear, I'm there for savings, not whatever you think college is for. Get Uber One for students, a membership to save on Uber and Uber Eats. With deals this good, everyone wants to be a student. Join for just $4.99 a month. Savings may vary. Eligibility and member terms apply. Summer's here, and you can now get almost anything you need for your sunny days delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a well-groomed lawn delivered, but you can get a chicken parmesan delivered. A cabana? That's a no. But a banana? That's a yes. A nice tan? Sorry. Nope. But a box fan? Happily yes. A day of sunshine? No. A box of fine wines? Yes. Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. What up, y'all? It's Joe Budden, here to talk about prize picks. Prize picks is the best place to win real money while watching football. You can get up to 100 times your money. Prize picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. This episode is brought to you by Merrick Pet Care. For over 30 years, Merrick has crafted high quality dog food. Since our founding in Hereford, Texas, we prioritized whole nutrition with deboned meat, fish, or poultry as the number one ingredient in every dry dog food recipe. That's why we say real is our recipe. Real ingredients and homestyle flavors your pet loves, all to fuel more real time together. Look for Merrick online or in your local pet store. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Eagles Checkdown right here on the Eagles Pin Pull Podcast Network. I'm your host, Phil Stifle bringing you the fastest under 10 minute Eagles podcast every single Monday through Friday, right here on the pin pull podcast network. And it's overreaction Monday. And the Eagles have won 15 to 12 against the New Orleans saints on Sunday afternoon, bringing their record to two and one. And boy, do we have a lot to overreact to on overreaction Monday. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of bad, and there's a lot of in between, but all that matters really when it comes down to it is the Eagles won. And they are two and one as they get ready to head head to next week and take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Guys, again, I'm Phil Stuff. You can find me on all social media platforms at Beard and Knowledge. So let's dive into the good. Today we're going to overreact to a lot of the good, a touch of the bad, and we'll get into the finer points as the week goes on. But first and foremost, I I, I cannot do this show without starting the show off and talking about how great the Eagles defense responded to a week's worth of criticism after the way they ended last week against the Atlanta Falcons on Monday Night Football. Literally, ev- almost everyone, everybody but Bryce Huff, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Zach Bond, everybody, Quinion Mitchell, N'Kobe Dean, Brandon Graham. Is he 35 or is he 25? You wouldn't know based off of the way he played on Sunday. Every single one of them outside of Bryce Huff stepped up their game and performed so well against what was supposed to be this vaunted New Orleans Saints offense. Now, just look at this way. The Saints scored 91 points in two weeks, the first two weeks of the season. The total yards, the Eagles offense put up 460 yards of offense, pretty expected from our Eagles offense. The Saints put up only 219 yards of offense. They were able to control Alvin Kamara. They were able to get pressure. They were able to get off the field on third down. Jalen Carter, bat at balls down, got after the quarterback, literally, Proof of why he was a top 10 draft pick not too long ago for the Philadelphia Eagles. All the, all the negativity that surrounded him, it's like they all locked themselves in a room and listened to every bit of criticism that Eagles fans and media leveled their way, and they used it as motivation because they went out there on, and, and performed 10 times better than we could have even remotely imagined against the New Orleans Saints offense. Now, I gave you guys keys to victory or the keys to the game for the Eagles on Friday's episode. And, and, and literally every single one of them, check, check, check. They did it. I said Alvin Kamara averaging almost six yards a carry. You needed to stop him on the initial contact. You couldn't let him break tackles and get five, six, seven chunk yards per play. They did that. He averaged under three and a half yards per carry on Sunday. I said you had to get pressure on Derek Carr. 
you you could not let him sit there and pick you apart. They only had the one Jordan Davis sack, which was excellent and scary. Could you imagine on a side note having a 380 pound Jordan Davis just running free at you as a quarterback? I mean, that's got to be a scary thing there. But they got pressure on him, and even though they only got the one sack, they got their hands up. They pressured him. They forced him to some bad throws. Their car was averaging, was throwing over 75% completion coming in this week. He completed only 56% of his passes. And a lot of those misses were when we had pressure in Derek Carr's face. So hands, applaud to the Eagles' defensive line. Applaud to the Eagles' defensive front seven. And it made Quinia Mitchell and Darius Slay's job so much easier back there in the defense because of the pressure that they were able to apply to Derek Carr. I said, you got to get off the field on third down. You got to stop them from having third and short every play. There are a lot more third and longs this week than in previous weeks for the New Orleans Saints because of the pressure the front of the Seagulls defense did. Zach Bond will not get the credit he deserves. But again, leading the team in tackles, that guy is a beast. That guy was all over the field making tackles and making plays on every single play. And again, as I said before, Brandon Graham, obviously Bryce Huff has been bad and was bad again this week. I, I don't know what the snap counts are when we're recording this Sunday night. Snap counts aren't out yet, but Zach Bond played or, Br- or Bryce Huff played a lot less, and Brandon Graham was out there, literally playing like a 25 year old kid again out there, literally in the backfield and getting pressure on the Saints' offensive line every single play. So a major round of applause for Brandon Graham there. The Seagulls' defense made plays when necessary. Now, we will have to get into injuries throughout this show and the big injury on the defense. Darius Slay took a big late hit and uh, got injured late in the game. Hopefully, he is okay. Uh, and literally, the next play on offense, they went right after Keely Ringo. That's something we'll discuss later in the week as we learn more about it. But I do not think the Eagles defense could have played a better game than they played on Sunday. And some of this is overreaction Monday hype, but some of this is just straight back. They literally took care of business. Again, 219 yards of total offense for the New Orleans Saints, who had put up 91 points the last two weeks. Told you guys, Saints weren't as good as their record said they were, and they played like that on Sunday. Offensively speaking, one of the other keys to victory was getting Dallas Goddard involved. And what did Dallas Goddard go out there and do? He caught 10 passes for 170 yards, including a huge 61-yard catch that set up Saquon Barkley for the game-winning touchdown. Congratulations to Dallas Goddard for showing up finally. You know, it's about time he heard the criticism. It's like everybody on the Eagles, except for Bryce Huff, heard the criticism this week and upped their game to another level. Obviously, we'll have to talk all week long about Jalen Hurts and his two turnovers in the first half, really setting this team behind. We're going to have to talk about Nick Sirianni being maybe a little too aggressive and going for it on fourth down a little too frequently. You got the best kicker in football in Jake Elliott, and I didn't even know if he was dressed on the team. He doesn't even do kickoffs anymore. And 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 kicking the or going for the fourth down at the end of the first half instead of kicking the field goal and getting the three points could have backfired massively. And it almost did. Luckily it did not. But sometimes Nick Sirianni gets in his own way and his aggressive nature maybe takes it a little too far sometimes. But today is not the day to worry about that. Right now is not the time to worry about. We're going to have that conversation throughout the week as more stats come about, more breakdown happens of this game. Jalen Hurts might have struggled with two turnovers early in the game, but in the second half of that football game, losing Devontae Smith to a a bad concussion, losing your right guard and your right tackle, Makai Becton and Lane Johnson. Jalen Hurts was out there poised throughout the second half of this game and led multiple huge scoring drives again this year, which you got to give him a round of applause. And a round of applause to Fred Johnson and Tyler Steen for stepping up big time. Saquon Barkley, again, another massive uh, you know game tonight, or t- yesterday, 17 carries, 147 yards, the two touchdowns, a- a- and it could have been more. I mean, Saquon Barkley did not touch the ball out of the backfield the first quarter of the football game. After he had his 60-plus yard touchdown, it was like 12 plays before they gave him the ball again. Kellen Moore just didn't want to give him the ball. But when he got the ball, he made plays even behind the patchworked offensive line when Lane Johnson and Mekhi Becton went get, went down in this game. On a side note, out of all the injuries this, that happened on Sunday, the one that I'm going to keep my eye on the most is the Lane Johnson because of the, thr- the talk of the throwing up and stuff like that. After a major concussion like that, he did not look well. He did not look good. 
We could be in for some real trouble next week against Tampa if Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Lane Johnson are all missing the football game next week. That's something to, we'll discuss later in the week, but that is something that I'm really, truly concerned about right there. But you know what? When it all comes down to it, talent won out. The better team won out. The Eagles beat the New Orleans Saints 15-12 to behind Jalen Hurts, behind Saquon Barkley, behind Dallas Goddard, offensively speaking, behind Brandon Graham, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and that defense. And again, even on the defense, we didn't mention it, Saquon, or uh, Darius Slay. And Quinny Mitchell, big end zone pass breakups to continue to hold that lead and keep the Eagles in the game. The, this team, although the score doesn't say it, performed extremely admirable and extremely great in a, in a really tough position on the road in New Orleans against a very hostile crowd. So we're going to have a fun fold week talking about it and breaking it down more. But this is the instant overreaction Monday version of the Eagles check down as the Eagles win 15 to 12. If you want a longer version of this, Check the link below in the description. I host Trending in the AM Monday through Friday at 8 a.m., 90 minutes of taking your opinions and thoughts. The number one sports morning show, whether it's on the dial or online, I'd greatly appreciate you guys to check it out. But again, I am Phil Stifle at Bearded Knowledge on social media. This is the Eagles Checkdown on the Eagles Pinpool Podcast Network. Go Birds and Bubbles up to you. Traveling to see your fave sports team is cool, but traveling with Amex Platinum for the big game is even better. Right this way. With access to dedicated card member entrances at select events, you can skip the line. And one. And with access to the Centurion Lounge, he shoots a three. You can catch the next game on the way home. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Card member entrance access not limited to Amex Platinum Card. This episode is brought to you by Merrick Pet Care. For over 30 years, Merrick has crafted high-quality dog food. Since our founding in Hereford, Texas, we prioritized whole nutrition with deboned meat, fish, or poultry as the number one ingredient in every dry dog food recipe. That's why we say real is our recipe. Real ingredients and homestyle flavors your pet loves, all to fuel more real time together. Look for Merrick online or in your local pet store. <laughs> We get it. Distractions happen. That's why we designed the fully electric, full-sized Volvo EX90 with the latest technology to keep you and those around you safe. Its two-sensor driver understanding system is designed to prevent distractions and help you stay focused. Reserve your Volvo EX90 today. Learn more at volvocars.com slash US. George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves, you can't do it, I'm going to help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV Plus. Admit it is cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves, streaming September 27th on Apple TV Plus. Rated R.